Welcome back, America. It's Hugh Hewitt. Thanks so much for joining me on the Hugh Hewitt Show. Joined now by United States Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas. Good morning, Senator Cotton. Great to have you as always. Good morning, Hugh. Always good to be back. Uh, Yesterday, I had your colleague Jim Lankford on, and he said any investigation of um, the Ukraine has to begin with Hunter Biden, that Hunter Biden is a key issue here that everyone doesn't want to deal with. That's a direct quote. Do you agree with Senator Lankford about Hunter Biden? Yes, you. And let's let's take stock about the situation with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. Hunter Biden was hired by a Ukrainian oligarch for fifty thousand dollars a month, a month, not a year, a month, fifty thousand dollars a month at a time when he was a known alcoholic and drug addict who had no experience whatsoever in Ukraine or in the oil and gas industry. What do we think that oligarch believed he was buying? He was buying access and influence to the Biden family. And sure enough, there's Vice President Joe Biden on camera bragging and boasting about how he flew into Kiev and got all chesty and told Poroshenko, the president at the time, to fire the prosecutor investigating Hunter Biden's patron. And lo and behold, threatening to withhold a billion dollars of U.S. aid from Ukraine if they didn't fire the prosecutor who was investigating Hunter Biden's patrons. Now, maybe there's nothing there, Hugh. Maybe everything's on the up and up. But surely the American people deserve to know what exactly happened and that that investigation itself was not tainted by corruption. Now, you're asking the right question, in my view, as a lawyer which is what was the motive of the oligarch who hired Hunter Biden? Now, I want to thank the whistleblower. I had never heard of this contract or of Joe Biden's threat until after the whistleblower brought it to our attention. And so it blew up in their hand. I, these really are the Wiley E. Coyote Democrats, Senator Cotton. Everything they try against Donald Trump blows up in their hands. But I am now focused on this contract. It, it's a hell of a rehabilitation program. I, don't, I wish Hunter Biden nothing but recovery. But if we could play, pay everyone who's in rehab $50,000 a month to do, I think, nothing, that might help them readjust. The, the main thing he was being paid $50,000 a month to do was be the vice president of the United States' son. Look, Hugh, there's a local angle of this as well, if you want to know a little bit more about I do. Biden's char- character. There is a young woman in her 20s in Arkansas who has filed a paternity suit in Arkansas State Court against Hunter Biden. And he is dodging process and has done so for months. He is literally hiding out from process servers so he doesn't have to submit to a DNA test. He claims that he's not the father of this child. If that's the case, why didn't he just accept process and provide a DNA sample? But no, he is literally hiding out from those working for a young woman in Arkansas who's raising a child by herself after she's filed suit against Hunter Biden in Arkansas State Court. Wow. Now, I'm a, I'm a great believer that the sons ought not to have the sins of the fathers visited on them, but now they've intersected over the Ukraine. And I want to go back to what this Ukrainian boss thought he was getting, because I want the people to understand Hunter Biden might not have even shown up. But if the corrupt oligarch is walking around the Ukraine saying Hunter Biden is on my board, how do people react to that, Senator Cotton? We know, but explain to the people how corruption actually works without Hunter Biden having to say a word. So your painting was probably the best case scenario, Hugh. And I think most of your listeners know uh, that even in America, where we have the gold standards of the rule of law and anti-corruption investigations and practices, uh, a lot of people would think that that means access and influence to the vice president. Ukraine is not America. Ukraine has many troubles, and they are divided by rival factions that point the fingers at each other and try to win and gain and preserve influence with patrons, not only in Ukraine, but around the world. And, of course, there's no greater partner to have than the United States government in a place like Ukraine. Now, let me let me conclude before I move on to the UNGA, because it was big news there yesterday. Lindsey Graham doesn't want to have a hearing on this. He wants John Durham, the attorney general, the U.S. attorney in Connecticut, to investigate the Bidens. I want a hearing. What does Tom Cotton want? I understand Senator Graham's point that the Department of Justice has the most investigative tools at their disposal. They're trained professionals and that Bill Barr, the attorney general, has appointed Mr. Durham to investigate some of these matters emerging out uh, of misconduct that led to the Russia hoax. Um, But at some point, if there's going to be hearings in Congress about President Trump conducting a routine diplomatic phone call, 
then we need to look at what kicked all this off, which is Hunter Biden's activities in Ukraine, which, by the way, just scratches the surface of what Hunter Biden has done, or for that matter, Joe Biden's brother, James Biden. Okay, very quickly, Senator, because we're running low on time. Yesterday, the E3, UK, France, and Germany all came to our position on the JCPOA. They say Iran's behavior has got to change. That got no coverage. How significant was that? It's a welcome step that those three countries have finally came around to our point of view. Now I would invite them to join us in the new sanctions to force Iran to the bargaining table on a thorough and durable peace. Uh, Tom Cotton, great to have you. Come back early and often next week, and I look forward to learning more about Hunter Biden. I hope the media is listening. That's quite a story in Arkansas. Coming up next hour, General James.